But hey, it's that time again. We got a little bit more to learn from section 7.6. We learned in our last video how to use the first derivative to determine the intervals for which a function is an increasing function and a decreasing function. And what we're going to do now is simply take the next step and use the first derivative to determine where the relative maxima, sorry, the relative extrema of a function are located, which can include relative maxima and relative minima values. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to understand what extrema are, and I kind of said it accidentally just now. You can ignore the stuff about um, relative extrema right there in the first derivative test for the moment. We'll get to that in just a short little while. But what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and sketch just some random graph of a function. Let's say that this is a function of some graph that we need to, to be able to analyze. Okay. When I'm talking about relative extrema, all right, what we're talking about are the extreme y values on a graph. And relative extrema in particular are going to be the extreme y values compared to all the other ones around them. Now, if you look at this graph, you're going to see several places that you would consider minimum and maximum values. And of course, they're going to be all the places where the first derivative is equal to zero. There's a minimum value. There's a maximum value. There's a minimum value. Yeah, that's not really a minimum value right there. We've got three places that we could call what two minimums and a maximum. Except that each one of those would be a relative min or a relative max value. Now why relative? Why can't I just call them the minimum values and maximum values for the graph. Well, the fact that I have two minimums means that they can't both be the minimum value on the graph. Okay? Now it does happen that this value is the what's called the absolute minimum of the graph. But you have to keep in mind that the function is going to keep on going forever either up or down or both. And so it's very rare that these little places where the first derivative is zero are actually absolute minimum or absolute value maximums. The absolute max here would be positive infinity because the graph does go into infinity. Okay, hopefully that idea makes sense. And then those relative minimum and relative maximum values are called relative extrema. And the first derivative can help you find where those values are. Okay, now let's read through this first derivative test. You can see that the first derivative test is used to locate relative extrema of a function f. If f is defined at a critical number c, okay, it can be undefined, meaning we're not talking about vertical asymptotes here. We're talking about stationary points. If f is defined at a critical number, then if f prime of x changes from positive to negative at x equals c, f has a relative maximum. Okay, if f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals c, then f has a relative maximum point at c comma f of c. Okay, now I'm going to highlight the intervals here over which the function is increasing and decreasing. You see between this relative minimum and maximum, the function is increasing. Between this relative minimum and right here, the function is, is increasing. Now, there actually is another spot where the first derivative is equal to zero right there, although you wouldn't call that a relative minimum or a maximum. I think you can see why. And that's simply because on the other side of that place, you have another increasing interval. If it didn't change from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, you didn't have a minimum or a maximum value. Okay, so you see where the function is increasing on those three intervals. Now, where or which of those does f prime of x change from positive to negative? 
Well, there's only one of those places where the first derivative changes from positive to negative, or in other words, the function changes from increasing to decreasing, and that's at this value right here, okay? The first one that I labeled as a relative maximum. So since f prime of x changed from positive to negative at that value of c, that means that that value of c is a relative maximum point. All right, then there are a couple places on this graph where this next rule will apply. It says if f prime of x changes, f prime of x changes from positive, from negative to positive x equals c, then f has a relative minimum at the point c comma f of c. All right. Now let me highlight these in a different color. You see right here at uh, this relative minimum that the graph changes from decreasing to increasing or the first derivative changes from negative to positive right there at that value C. So that's a relative minimum. And you see at this what actually was our absolute minimum as well, but it's a relative minimum compared to everything around it also, that we change from decreasing to increasing. First derivative change from negative to positive. So there's a relative minimum. All right. So whenever you're trying to determine where the relative minimum and the relative maximum values are, you want to look for critical numbers first of all. You want to find places where f prime of x is defined, which means you're looking for where the first derivative equals zero. And then you want to check to either side of that value c and determine does the sign of the first derivative change from one to the next? All right, let's move on and see an example where we're actually going to apply this. And we're actually going to go back to the example that we worked in the previous video. We're going to look at this example B. Although the directions have changed here, this is example 23 in your textbook instead of example 22. It's just that it uses the same equations. And you remember using this equation right here. And there are several things that we determine about that equation that I'm about to pop on your screen for you. Okay, this time we're trying to use the first derivative test to find the relative extrema for this function, meaning we want to know where there's a relative minimum and where there's a relative maximum. There could be more than one. Now, remember for this particular function that there were three critical values, but two of them are places where the function was undefined. The function was undefined here and the function was undefined there at x equals 1. Those were both vertical asymptotes. So the only place where we had a critical value where the function was defined was right there. That was a stationary point or a critical value. And when we're using the first derivative test we want to find that critical value and then we want to determine does the first derivative change from positive to negative or negative to positive as you get to that particular critical value c? And indeed, in this case, the sign of the first derivative on the left side is negative and the sign on, of the first derivative to the right side is positive. And so that means that the graph was kind of going like this at that point. It was going down. Then it got to x equals c zero, really in this case, and then it turned back up. So you had a relative minimum. And actually, what needs to happen is that whenever we find a relative minimum, we don't want to just know the x-coordinate associated with that, we want to know the y-coordinate as well. If you look back at the first derivative test, it says there's a relative minimum or maximum at the point c comma f of c. So we want to know the y coordinate that goes along with the x coordinate of that critical value. All right, now f of zero, if you look back at the function, would give you negative four over negative one, so it would give you positive four. So the relative minimum value is zero comma four. All right, now we're going to look at that graph again just one more time to make sure that that makes sense to you. Okay, and this 
indeed confirms that we had a relative minimum value at x equals zero and in fact you can kind of tell that it's when x equals zero y equals four zero comma four that was our relative minimum value all right now let's try another example that we haven't worked on whatsoever Now, still in example 23, but I'm going to go backwards. We just did part A or B of that. Let's go back and do part A. And here's really what I would like. I would like for you guys to try this on your own. Now, let me remind you of the process. We're using the first derivative test. And in order to use the first derivative test, you have to do the following things. You have to find critical values. And remember, we need values where the derivative is defined, so don't include vertical asymptotes. That will not be pertinent to this graph, but if there were vertical asymptotes, we don't want to include those. And then you want to determine if it changes, if the first derivative goes from positive to negative or negative to positive on either side of that critical value. Okay, and if so, you have a relative minimum or a relative maximum value, and so you're going to find out what those values are. Go ahead and pause and try that out. All right, got a lot of work for you to follow with me here. First thing I did, of course, was find the first derivative because that's necessary to find the first derivative test, and then you see where I set the first derivative equal to zero so that I could find the critical values. And I found out that the critical values, plus where the first derivative were equal to zero, was that x equals two and x equals negative one. And so I came over here and I put those on a little number line so I knew which intervals I would need to look at to determine when the function is increasing and decreasing. All right. Now, I had to find something between negative infinity and negative 1. And what I did was I chose negative 2 to be representative of that interval. And I find out what f prime of negative 2 is, which the actual value didn't matter, but the fact that it was positive did matter. All right. Then I chose from the interval from negative 1 to 2, I chose 0, the simplest number I could to represent that interval. And the first derivative of zero turned out to be negative. Then I chose positive three to be my number that represented the interval from two to infinity. And I found out that the first derivative at three is positive. So this thing went from positive to negative to positive when you're looking at those critical numbers. Now let's see what conclusion we can make with that. Okay, at our two critical values, negative 1, which is one of our c's, and 2, which is our other c, at each of them, the sign of the derivative changed at that point. It changed from positive to negative when x equals negative 1. And what that tells me is that at negative 1, and I figured out what the y-coordinate that goes along with negative 1 is, you see the work above, at negative 1, 7, we're then going to have a relative maximum. Because if the first derivative went from positive to negative, that portion of the graph looked this way. Sad face? Eh, maybe not. I'm pretty happy about that. Then, at our second critical value, which was x equals 2, for which the y coordinate is negative 20, the sign of the derivative changed from negative to positive, meaning the graph looked more like a happy face. And yeah, I think that's more accurate for what we're doing here. That means we had a relative minimum value there. All right, so find your critical values. See if the sign of the derivative changes at the critical value from positive to negative or vice versa. And if both those things are true, then you'll either have a relative maximum or relative minimum. Simple concept. Takes some work sometimes, but I hope you get it. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.